Friends from work, we're back. We're here today to talk about the best live action Joker. I have no idea how we're going to do this. Stay tuned. Let's chat. Everybody, come on, let's get down. Get down. I got a little finger happy there. That <laughs> I was like, nope, no, we have to play that song because uh-huh. the artist is here. Freak Bass, what's up, buddy? Hey, how are you guys doing? Good. What's yeah, going right, on? Man. Hey, Bob, Seska, what's up, dude? Hi, doing great. Doing great. It's great to be here. I'm it's a little great. bit, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, just right after the weekend. Uh, I, for some reason, I didn't sleep very well last night, so this should be interesting. I should be uh, pretty groggy and incoherent, just like mm-hmm. I am right now. So <laughs> I can't tell at all, and you look fabulous. <laughs> and and I was telling him uh, off off uh, off mic, freak base, that the fact that he's not the world's most famous political analyst on radio is a damn shame. Mm-hmm. Um, and oh, speaking man. of speaking of celebrity, <laughs> we have Mister TikTok in the house who was just telling us he's up all night streaming for the fans around the world what's going on with that dude oh man i mean it's like every night you know I, my shows every single well except saturday so i do sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday 10 p.m eastern time and um i'm i'm, I'm up late uh making funky music so uh you know and when i'm done with the show i'm hyped so i'm usually that's when i catch up on all my uh superhero action about 2 38 and you know bob but bob knows because i like i texted him right when it you know i become an avid bike rider and, and guess when oh, I go? Yeah. Guess when yeah. I go bicycling? Oh, about 1.30 a.m. Two in the morning. Yeah. Oh my God! So instead of, <laughs> instead of called calling the show "Friends from Work," you should just call it "Friends with Insomnia." <laughs> That's right. That's the, exactly. the new name. That's well, the I name love it. My neighbor, my neighborhood. You know, it's uh, you know, it's it's a lot of dead ends and cul de sacs. So uh, yeah. at nighttime, I mean, it's 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 actually the best time to you know. Obviously, the weather's great, and uh, and mentally, it's it's uh, you know, I love uh, it's, as you know, Bob from writing. It's just like it's the place you can kind of cl- especially after being stuck in front of a screen for oh, yeah, three hours. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the place to. Clear your head so i love it yeah Yeah. Yeah, and you know freak i spent and i'm still in the business i just don't i'm not a full-time operator anymore i I can't do it i just can't not with five collective kids and sure dallas to houston back and forth constantly but uh for 20 years of my life you know i was running restaurants bars owning them running them whatever i was doing and uh i I can just remember sometimes getting home sometimes at four in the morning because your bar closes at two you don't get out of there till 3 30 yeah and uh, you get home at four and you're just up like, right. You can't, can't just go to sleep. So I can't even imagine just doing what you're doing with your, your music and that passion and then going right to bed. That's impossible. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah. It's a, it's anyway. a weird lifestyle, but it's, it's, you know, it's, it's the year it's, it's 2020, very 2023, you know, it's very 2023. Yeah. Speaking of impossible, I think that's a great segue. I have no idea how I, this topic has been making me loose sleep. Speaking of loose sleep, this tie, this is tying in beautifully to our, our lead in here. So, we uh, at Friends from Work here, Brian and, and Courtney and I are all three actors. And so we've been very careful about doing podcasts, maybe more so than most people, because there's just been a lot of restrictions that we want to honor the strike and, and SAG and everything like that and our agent's request. And so uh, we have not been doing anything. And so we I just wanted a topic that was just something we could talk about that had that was not in any kind of conflict or anything like that. And uh, Freak Base and I were texting and you came up with this topic and it was Hey, best live cinematic Joker. Let's just talk about that. And I thought, how the hell are we going to do that? How are we going to choose the best live action cinematic Joker? And I don't, I'm not sure if I have yet. I think I'm going to go last and I'm going to choose at the very last minute (laughs) because it's like, it's like a four way, it's like a four way tie. Well, he's going to have to go first because it was his idea. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, in approaching this and I, and I can say this and I, I, I feel safe that I can speak for all of us is that, it's so hard sometimes in these sort of topics because it's the jokers are representing the material that they had and the time that their material came out. And so how do you compare Cesar Romero to Jared Leto? How do you even do that? Right. And, and to me, that was the most challenging thing. And every one of them, in my opinion, there's never been a bad one, do represent their their uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Help me out here, guys. Their their film, their project. Their, the the director and writer's vision for what they were trying to accomplish and their time. Yeah, but and also the, the zeitgeist of the time, too, because I, I one of my favorite memes about the whole Batman universe uh, is the one that 
uh, goes through the four big uh, live action jokers and starts out with Cesar Romero's Joker and says, okay, that's LSD. Then <laughs> Jack Nicholson is cocaine. Oh. And Heath, Heath Ledger is heroin. Yeah. And Jared Leto is meth. Uh, that's, wow. that's, that's kind of, right. you know, you can kind of draw that parallel. Yeah, I think yeah. that works. So you know. what do we do with uh, Joaquin Phoenix then? Where, what is he? I know he's not on that meme, but what would he be? Uh, Xanax. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Something that, like, uh, uh, serious antipsychotic meds. Some sort of pharmaceutical, I think. Yeah, for sure. Oh, you know what just dawned on me? I, I just hit me. What is the actor's name? That plays him in the Batman. It's it's more of a, the deleted scene, but it's Barry. Oh, uh, Barry Keegan, Barry Keegan right? Barry, yeah, Keegan, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Man, that deleted scene is great. I want to oh, see yeah. more. Of, I want to see more of that Joker. Yeah. What, Bob? What do you think of that scene? Do you think that should have been in the film, or what do you think? Uh, you know what? I'm glad that it wasn't in the film because yeah. it's very easy for Joker to eclipse every other villain in a movie. And True. I think. I like the idea of starting out and keeping it simple and narrowing the scope of the villains. Uh, and that's the way it should have been. And then we can see Barry, is it Kogan? Oh, I don't know. We're just Kogan. Yeah. That. I read these yeah. names all the time. I never say them out loud. because The only time yeah. I get to do that is on this show. The story but, of my life. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Barry Kogan. Let's w wait on him. I think he's going to be featured in the second movie. So that'll be something to look forward to. We don't want to, you know, blow through all the villains in one film. But he was great. I mean, the scene that I saw was um, amazing and shocking because mm -hmm. his face is more messed up than any Joker face that we've seen so far. In live so, action, yeah, yeah. He's pretty, uh, pretty wrecked. So I'm interested to see what that face looks like in broad daylight or some sort of lighting so we get the whole flavor of just how messed up he is and whether Batman and we get and we get a little him or what he's actually in the real film i mean i know it's a different scene but it like we get that little teaser of him and it wasn't that that was in the real film wasn't it yeah there's a little, a little bit of him yeah yeah. Yeah. Little teaser. yeah yeah yeah, that, you, yeah you see him a little bit and then obviously you hear him at the lab he's talking to the riddler right, right. Uh, uh yeah yeah that's a good scene i uh i'm not sure if he should have even been in it at all, I don't know. I'm I'm torn on yeah. that. But that that deleted scene is great. I'm glad mm -hmm. he wasn't in the film too. I think would have messed up the flow. But I love that there's a history there with them already, which is fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really cool stuff. But I'll just say, I guess I just inadvertently left him out because I guess it's fair to say, freak, right? God bless them. Is great. Can't wait to see him in Batman too. But let's say that he just doesn't count because he's barely in the Batman, and that was a deleted sure, scene. of course, right? All right, fair right. to say. All right, since you um, put us to this impossible task, you, my friend, Bob and I spoke off camera. We both agreed that you have to go first. No, we actually did. Nah. But, <laughs> but you do. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to say yet. <laughs> um, oh, no worries. I well, have no idea. Well, let me start off by saying, and, and Rick, <laughs> you and I talked about this when we started texting about this. It's um, on top of, you know, Riddler being my favorite character in, in comic book movie world. Um and you guys correct me both if I'm wrong, but um, I don't think another superhero slash supervillain has ever won an Oscar before. And now we have one that's won the same characters won two separate Oscars God, by two incredible. separate characters. You know, so that just tells you the source material right there, how strong it is to begin with, like where everybody wants to play this part too as well. Also, quickly, we were mentioning TikTok before. I actually, on my show, we do polls throughout the show. show. And I told everybody on last night's show, I'm like, I'm gonna. I told them about your podcast, and I'm gonna be on today, and we're gonna talk about Joker. So we did a poll on there. <laughs> so before I tell you what my pick is, I'm gonna tell you. And I was kind of shocked. Here, I actually have the exact exact numbers here, right here. And uh, I, of course, always just assume when it's kind of mainstream, it's gonna be Heath's gonna win out. You know, just because of you know. And my the demo people watching me are everybody from 18 to. 65 you know it's like everywhere you know tiktok's such a huge demographic so actually uh old uh, old jack won jack nicholson mm. won in that so uh not overwhelmingly it was uh 45 percent for jack nicholson heath came in second uh uh joaquin and caesar both tied and uh jared got zero so, <laughs> no. poor jared yeah yeah is, is it fair to say jared's on nobody's list can we say that? Yes, but I did love the Zack Snyder Justice League little edition tag on that. I thought that was yeah. really, really good. 
Yeah. I love that scene. Yeah. It's one of yeah. my favorite things about the Justice League cut, the Snyder cut, whatever you want to call it. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, I, I really do. I think it's a great scene. I thought he was underrated. And let's give him credit. He's the first Joker also to be in live action with Harley Quinn, which is cool. Oh, yeah, true. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and yeah. I think, you know what? I think he would be or he would have received more votes if maybe his role would have been uh, more substantive in Suicide Squad. Suicide sure. Squad was a terrible movie, the, the first one. Yeah. Uh, at least the current studio edit of right. it is. I mean, it remains to be seen what the air cut looks like. But uh, that movie was not good. So it's very difficult for someone playing that role to find any meat to it. I mean, the the great thing about Joker is it's sort of like the modern day Hamlet. Like every actor yeah. wants a, to do, take a shot at playing this character. Yeah. And it requires more depth. You, you have to explore what the character is all about. You just can't put freak on screen, not present company accepted, but right. you, you can't just put a guy <laughs> who's a freak on screen and then assume that, people will gather and enjoy that character or be freaked out by that character. Right. It's it, you need to explore the psyche of Joker a little bit more, get into the depth of it for anything to latch on to as a fan. And we saw that with all the other live action Jokers. We just didn't get that a whole lot with Jared Leto. And it, I think it's partly in the same realm as Barry Cogan. Yeah, because he was hardly on screen enough for us to make a judgment call on if he's any good. Uh, you know, I thought I thought Jared Leto's Joker looked interesting and unique and and unlike the previous Jokers that we had seen. Damage tattoo aside, uh, right. so it was a it was an it, there were there was potential there for Jared Leto's Joker that was unexplored, and, and as you guys said, we did get a taste of that in the Snyder Cut of Justice League. So, uh, you know, maybe a little bit more would have improved Jared Leto's chances in this yeah. discussion, but, you know. Sure. Uh, you know, I, 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 I agree with most of that. I'll just, I would, I would push back a little bit. Well, I'll push back. It's just my own opinion. But uh, I, I like, actually, the first 30, 45, 45 minutes of that movie. A lot, actually. Suicide I, Squad? I do. Now, now, it falls apart badly. I mean, the last yeah. half is trash, but the first half I think is actually great. I think it has one of the best live action Batman scenes. In oh yeah, that is yeah. seriously. You that, know what? You're it, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. He, he and O. Will Smith. Um, that's a great. That's actually a really great scene. And well, and love, obviously, obviously, uh, Margot Robbie, Harley Quinn. She made that character iconic in that movie, pretty much. Yeah, you know? she did. Yeah, she so. did. So, yeah, I think we all agree there was potential there. And uh, if he popped up somehow somewhere, I would not be upset about it at all. I did not dislike him as the Joker, but I, I agree with Bob that the source material itself was too flawed. And I think obviously there was a lot of things that were cut out. I would love to see we're in this world of, of cuts, you know, Snyder cut, Schumacher cut, you know, yeah. David Ayer cut. But still, I would love to see the uh, air cut. So, so I like the stills I've seen of the Joker. It looks very interesting. Yeah. So anyway, so Jared Leto's a great actor. Uh, a missed opportunity for that Joker, but maybe we'll see him again. But um, I, he left a mark. I think that Snyder scene uh, cut, that's, that, that shot is pretty fantastic. Yeah. Anyway, okay. All right, so, buddy. So how did you get to your number one pick? So it was obviously incredibly tough. Um, you know, I mean, I was even kind of had one little foot dipping in the Cesar Romero camp for a little bit just because, you know, we like to joke about him. Excuse, excuse that pun. But um He's I don't know if we would have any of these jokers if had he not kind of created that almost kind of on street persona to begin mm -hmm. with. You know, he yeah. kind of set, set the table really for for all of them in a way. Um, I also want to say before I tell you my choice, my choice has a little bit of an asterisk because it, a lot of it this this choice could change depending on what happens in Joker, too. Um, if this movie ends up being incredible and as bonkers as it looks like it might be. <laughs> um because i love joker the movie joker um yeah. i mean I, I i've watched it count i know a lot of people like i don't i don't think it's got a great rewatchability factor i i disagree i've watched it seven eight nine times i mean i just just that journey that you go on with joaquin is just just incredible and mm -hmm. and the transition from who he starts off in the movie to the final scene when he's with de niro and like the johnny carson type talk show it's a great scene oh it's incredible you know and i love king of comedy so i mean i know it's you know it's not exact king of comedy but um you know that's one of my favorite scorsese movies of all time and um but with that all said 
there ultimately can only really be one choice for me. It's this Mr. guy right here. Mr. Ledger. I mean, I know it's probably the, the, the stock, more generic answer, but he just the scene, the scene, I think one of the best maybe all time movie scenes of all time where with the uh, you complete me scene when they're um, Batman's interrogating him mm-hmm. um, because that moment. You can just see, and Bale's so good. Bale gets so underestimated in this scene too, as well, just because Heath Ledger's so incredible. But but you can just see in Ledger's eyes, him looking at him like, "You've won," like he knows he's lost. Mm-hmm. There, he, there's no beating this guy. Like he's looking at Joker. It's like there's no beating this guy. Mm-hmm. And the the fact that there's been a whole preceding movie before that where we've you know they've developed this this character that Christian Bale has has so brilliantly done. And um, that Ledger is able to rise above that and with his interpretation of the character and still kind of have one foot in fantasy and one foot in reality. I mean, I know he doesn't have the, the perma white thing. And that was always like a, a, a point of contention with a lot of people online, whether it should be what it should be or not. But um, the way that he's just able to embody the character and just how freaking scared. I mean, even now you watch that scene, especially the scene with the. Um, like the the terrorist scene when he's got the the pseudo Batman there, you know the that that scene is like terrifying yeah. still, you know, yep. Very especially with, yeah, yeah and, he, and now the way things are happening in our society for real, I mean, you could see something like that. Look at me. Yes. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. Exactly. He does that demonic, and then he goes to laughing, <laughs> and in that scene, you hear him laughing more than you do throughout any point in the movie. He's very Joker. <laughs> he's right, got, yeah. right. Oh, he's got the mask. He's doing that. Um, Just, I mean, there's the, really no beating, you know, I mean, but again, the, with the asterisk, I mean, because Joaquin, I mean, two different interpretations of the same character. I, I've heard a lot of people criticize the Joaquin character saying that he doesn't seem smart enough to be the Joker. I've heard that a lot. Like, he doesn't seem like the character doesn't where you know, he's version, obviously he's as much crazy as he is. He still seems brilliant. You know, like he's probably got like incredibly high IQ where I've heard some people say that Joaquin doesn't seem like his IQ is at the level to be a joker. Um, but the way he interpreted him, which I don't agree with because the way that, and especially the way it ends up being that final scene with at the, uh, you know, at the talk show that we were talking about earlier. But again, uh, the, the Ledger thing, that was that was a game changer movie wise. You know, I mean, obviously you've got the best director and, and maybe the history of cinema or one of the best directors, excuse me, in the history of cinema uh, directing you too. So yeah, I just couldn't, <clears throat> could, couldn't, couldn't pass that. That was uh, as generic as the answer might be. There's just, it's just, it is what it is, you know? The interrogation yeah. scene is <clears throat> one for the history books. And my, my favorite line and that whole thing, I think, is kill you. What would I do without you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. I mean, yeah. It just gives me chills. Because they are, in my opinion, I think Batman is the greatest fictional mm-hmm. character of all time. I'll die on that hill. Mm-hmm. And part of the reason why is because of his number one arch nemesis. Yeah. That juxtaposition, that visual of a man dressed as a bat fighting a crazy clown, like, it's it transcends. It yeah. just does. It, it'll, that'll, that will be popular 100 years from now. Yeah. Uh, the the other thing real quickly is, uh, and I know you guys have seen this, but like the way that Ledger, you know, he had to wear the prosthetic, obviously, with the, with the scars and mm-hmm. how he had to kind of I think he was like lick, had to lick his lips to kind of keep it so it didn't, didn't dry out. And he yeah. kind of incorporated that into the character, you know, with a little tick that he had. I mean, just uh, oh, it's just so incredible. <laughs> I, yeah, I want to make heavily involved in developing the makeup. Heath Ledger uh, d- sat in a hotel room, I think, on his own. Really. Yeah pouring over this character and making it uh, unique to himself. And I think developing the makeup himself, apart from the prosthetic scars, uh, I lent what I was saying before, that depth to the character. He felt lived in. He felt like right. that this guy had been around for a while. By well, in that very first scene, the bank heist. Yeah. well, as I say, the very first scene we yeah. see him in the movie from the back, we don't even see his face from the right, back. Right, and right. just his, sta- you know, a little bit of a crooked shoulder kind of stance there. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you already you're like oh man this guy oh. this guy is yeah. bad news you can just yeah, tell from yep. just the back of him yeah and, and if i may and bob i want to throw this at you and tell me if sure. you agree with this I, I think one of the things that's brilliant about the nolan trilogy also is how and i wrote an article about this years ago that i was quite proud of saying i you know comic book purists will say that this 
veered away too much from the comics, and I completely disagree. I think that what Nolan brilliantly did is he took the comics and he just twisted them and made them grounded. Mm -hmm. So yeah. no jo Joker wasn't perma white. A perma white implies obviously that something happened that he's permanently Joker physically. So yeah. what he did instead of that, because it wouldn't make sense in this world, is that he is he is permanently marked as Joker with the scars yeah. for the yeah. for the yeah. face. Right. And, that, and that's the perma white for that movie. But right. would you agree yeah. with that, Bob? Yeah, oh, yeah, exactly. And we can look at a parallel, something like uh, Dracula or Frankenstein's monster or something like that. It would be weird if fans of the Universal Monsters like we're getting really militant about how every Frankenstein should now have like a flat top head and the bolts right. coming out of the neck. Sure. No, you want to give director, writer, the actors some sort of latitude in terms of putting their own stamp on a character like that. And, uh, and and so I guess that leads me to where I land on this particular topic, which is that I, I think Heath Ledger, for my money, is the best Joker. But I think my favorite Joker is Jack Nicholson. To <laughs> ah, coincide with your, I'm not mad. I'm not uh, mad about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I say that <laughs> my one caveat, my one nitpick is exactly my one nitpick is that the makeup hasn't held up as well over the years. It's still I can kind of see it now, and maybe that's because I've watched, as we all have, a million different making of things, and we, you know, because the internet demystifies everything, so we now have the full scope of the behind the scenes it's aspect it's of quote. how that how that all worked out, and we've seen the different iterations of it as they were developing the character. But the thing that I love about Jack Nicholson's Joker is the fact that he's got more layers to it. He's not just psychotic and angry and villainous he's silly and devious too there's like a there's a, a Cesar Romero angle in there you can mm -hmm. see the different aspects of Joker played out through Jack Nicholson's portrayal so you get that silly uh, Cesar Romero aspect of it but then you also get the more modern like psychotic murderous joker who's not afraid to incinerate someone at a board meeting or uh to, to just be a homicidal maniac so there's that uh sort of heath ledger aspect of of the joker character in there too obviously coming way before that but suffice to say i like the different dimensions of Joker playing out through Jack Nicholson. It's he's fun, but he's also scary as hell. Like there's that great shot, the way till they get a load of me shot, oh, man. which is one of the best Joker yeah. shots. Of course. Uh, that yeah. we've ever seen. There have been several of obviously of Heath Ledger in the dark Knight, but as far as the Jack Nicholson Joker goes, that one shot was so iconic and everything looked on point. The makeup was good, his expression, his delivery, the lighting, the cinematography, everyone was so perfect for that one shot of Joker uh, introducing him in the full on persona. So yeah, that's kind of where I land on this as far as uh, why Jack Nicholson stands out so much because no matter where you come from in terms of your view of Joker, Jack Nicholson brought that. There was something there for every taste in uh, Joker fandom. So yeah. that's where I kind of land. And that's why. That's why he got first billing. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. I mean, he was really savvy on the business side. Of it. <laughs> Absolutely, I mean, he was. That he was saw a... something in that script and that director that uh, I don't think anyone else saw at the time. I know the, like... the fanboys were. <laughs> I mean, I can't even imagine if the internet had existed in the lean up, lead up to Batman 89. I wonder if it had done, I wonder if it would have done as well as, as it had, uh, if the internet had existed. Thank and, God it, thank God it didn't. You know, yeah. that's, that, that, uh, <laughs> no that's, that scene, uh, way did they get a load of me? I remember that being in yeah. the first teaser Yeah, and I, and I remember watching an episode of Cheers. And mm -hmm. so this was the Curse of the Alley years because this was probably in 88 when the first teaser dropped, late 88, because it came out in June of 89 or June or July yeah. of 89. Was it July? June. June. June of 89. June. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. June. Right. And I just remember going, oh, my gosh, the visual of this. And at this point, I had read, you know, some Frank Miller stuff and I was privy to a darker Batman, obviously. But to see that on screen and then Jack Nicholson's Joker is what really got it. And I remember for me at that age. Let's see, I was about, how old was I then? 13, 12, something like that. Yeah, 14. I don't know, I can't wow. do math in my head. But I but I can remember 
what was the film that Jet Nicholson did where he had all the, I guess, the witches and shares in it, and he's the witches of Eastwick. Witches yeah. of Eastwick. Yeah, my that was prior to that, right? Yeah, let me check out my timeline. Right, Satan. He played Satan, and it was another great because that was like an eight, 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 devil. Yeah. 86, 87, maybe right, something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember okay, I was in like tenth grade or something. Yeah. I so, that. so my sister and my mom loved that movie, and I remember watching it with them. And then I just, for me, I just made that connection that that's who that was, and that yeah. also made me fall fall in love with Jet Nicholson's work. Yeah, uh, and you know what? It's funny when Batman eighty nine came out the previous summer for some reason. Uh, you know, kids do this when they don't have when they have copious amounts of free time. We ended up watching The Shining, uh, renting that from Errol's video a gazillion mm -hmm. times the previous summer. So the summer of 88 and then that whole school year, the in my senior year of high school, 80, 88 into 89. I was watching the Batman 66 TV series because I think it was either on MTV or in syndication. I forget exactly which it was probably syndication. And so I was just my Batman fandom was at a like an all time high at that mm -hmm. point, never higher than it was when I was six <laughs> years old and watching Batman 66. But, uh, <laughs> when I was 12. Yeah, that was a big deal. Or when I was in 12th grade. And so when that movie came out and it was so vastly different from Batman 66, and then also at the same time, it had one of my favorite actors at the time, Jack Nicholson playing the Joker. Uh, it seemed like perfect casting. It seemed like obvious casting, especially after seeing The Shining so many times. I said, well, yeah, this makes perfect sense. This guy losing his mind, perfect Joker casting. And then of course, Jack Nicholson's got that face, uh, the perfect Joker face. And then uh, saying something nice about the Joker makeup for Jack Nicholson, I love the idea that it kind of looks like a crappy facelift. Like he got <laughs> right, like an right. extreme facelift right, in the right. process. So right. I, I like the origin story. For love that Joker. Joker. Getting, getting love that Joker. Shot in the face. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, getting shot in the face and then falling into that vat of acid that you know changed his skin color and his hair and so on. That, brilliant. And then... And then the idea of having him put on flesh colored makeup over his white face. Right, right. And right. then saying publicly that he had taken his mask off. There was so many interesting things about that portrayal of that character. And you know, it's no wonder then that jumping he got over top to billing. Yeah. Jumping over the heat thing really quick. Um, that the first time I saw Dark Knight, um, you know, the scene where he's a cop, like I was yeah. like, is he doing the Jack Nickel? Because I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be, part, you know, they leave it a little ambiguous. So I was mm -hmm. like, is was he putting the, you know, the Jack Nicholson makeup to become the cop like over his like, is he really? Oh, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You and know, it was never really clear with Heath Ledger what exactly caused those scars because he was an unreliable narrator right, in terms right. of how uh, that happened and yeah. his story changed a bunch of times. Right, so is, we never right. really found out what the hell happened to that guy that led to those facial scars and ultimately what led him to that life of uh, psychotic crime. I mean, uh, so unhinged and unpredictable uh that character is just so terrifying one of the scariest or i think the scariest portrayal of joker for sure and you know to uh piggyback a little bit off of your comment about uh, you know what jack nicholson did with that character he was zany he was funny i mean it was yeah. funny mm -hmm. i i think what also makes that work for me is that he is the uh the one actor outside of walking phoenix because that's a whole kind of different black label thing but um out of the more traditional versions of the joker is, is that you see him as jack napier you see jack nicholson make have a performance that before he transitions into the the joker much like we get from joker todd phillips joker but in a you know in a batman film and i think there's something about that for myself that makes that joker even more fascinating and why he's I mean, he's in my top two and I, he, he goes back and forth and I'll get to mine in a second. And I think I've got mine now, but I, I, I really love that we get to see Jack Nicholson play like, for instance, the character when he's standing in front of the mirror. Right. And um, what's her name? She's from my hometown. I should remember. She used to date Mick Jagger. She's from Mesquite, Texas. J Jerry Hall. Yeah. J Jerry Hall. She what's her what's her character's name in the movie? Oh, 
God. Okay. Because no. he says <laughs> she commits suicide. Good question. Yeah. He could, remember, he smashes her mask to Kim, to Vicky Bell. Right, right. Yeah. right. That she jumped off. That Yeah, whatever. She walks up and she said, you look fine, Jack. I didn't ask. Oh, yeah. Right, right. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah. And then when he becomes Joker, when he and then when he enters Jack Pounce's uh, uh, suite, his, 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 his whatever that is, that amazing high-rise apartment he's living in, and he's like, you set me up over a woman, a woman. And you can see his makeup and see that smile. And he's still sort of Jack Napier there as, right, he's, ta- right. as, he's, as he's talking to him. You know, you set me up, you, you, you know, whatever. And as he walks up, he's like, Jack is dead, my friend. And then you can call me Joker. And at that moment, that transition was complete. That was like Anakin becoming Darth Vader right there. I mean, right, right. Maybe bad analogy because he was never a good Jedi. But, you know, still the transition. By the way, the character uh, was Alicia. Alicia. Jerry Hall played Alicia. Yeah. yeah. North Mesquite High School. Old. Uh, she was hmm. a once old Mesquite High School. Yeah. That's our one of our claim to fame in my little hometown. And she was she was married. Wasn't she married to uh, our our good friend at Fox News too for a short time? Was she really? I know she we're, dated we're, J- Mick Jagger for a while. No, well, she, I think she, yeah, and but uh, you know uh, who's retiring? You know the 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 the, the main guy at Rupert Fox. Rock. Yeah, yeah. We're, I'm pretty sure. She, oh, she might. She, she might even might be, have been. She might even be currently, or she it, it was fairly recently. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Yeah, Mesquite's got Jerry Hall and the original Pearl Jam drummer. Dave Arbor Zooey. Wow. And then she is the fourth wife of Rupert Murdoch. They divorced (laughs) last year. Oh, Oh, is that right? There you go. All right. Well, good for her. Anyway, so yeah, I think Jack Nicholson's Joker is legendary. And for me, it's held up real nicely. You know, Mm -hmm. Freak, when I was watching The Flash, I was still kind of hoping that maybe there would be some Jack Nicholson (laughs) cameo. I know he's retired, but still, I just wanted it. I guess we got the box, though. The laughing box. Yes, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, okay. So, in this conversation, um, I, I've I've been going back and forth between Jack Nicholson and Heath Ledger, and it's hard because they're very different interpretations. And then to give props to Cesar Romero for you said this best: without him working, there never would have. I don't think any of this would be here. Yeah. And e- even though that show catapulted the popularity of Batman in a lot of ways, it set it back culturally because it took a long time for. Uh, Batman mainstream to break away from the zany pow pow, holy this Batman and all that stuff. And, and yeah. by the way, it still hasn't gone away. It's still part sure. of the vernacular. Mm-hmm. But Batman eighty nine, you know, paved the way for. I mean, we can talk about comics in the eighties and Frank Miller and Dark Knight Returns and all that, and that's all very valid. I'm talking mainstream, right? Yeah, ninety percent of the people that see these films don't read these comics. Yes, I'm pulling that out of my ass, but it's probably pretty accurate. Um, but. Um, but so we got to give him props and it's always fun to note. And I should have a picture of him pulled up for this, that he, he was so cool. And so uh, sought after he's like, if you want me in this role, I'm not shaving my, my mustache. <laughs> yeah. And he didn't shave it. And it's, I remember as a kid noticing that one day going, does he have a mustache? In his? You know what? I, I didn't notice it. I, it was something that I didn't notice until much later until I was watching it again when I was in high school, when I was a kid, Maybe it's because television sets were teeny tiny in the 70s, and I, I just didn't notice that he had a mustache under there. Were, were, uh, you, were you watching it in black and white? Um, maybe on occasion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but again, the resolution was not strong enough. Or is it, You know what? Maybe I just wasn't paying attention. I just wasn't focused in on uh, Cesar Romero's upper lip. <laughs> the, mm. That was just not a thing I was looking at, so maybe that's why. And, and you watch the you watch the show now, and he's incredible. In fact, in a lot of ways, like and, and and Bob, I I shared your one of your best moments, the scene where Adam West is talking on the bat phone as Batman, and then to Commissioner Gordon, then he's talking on the telephone as Bruce Wayne, and he's yes. going back. And oh, forth. that's so good. And then he talks that to is, himself. Yeah, that is genuinely badass, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Like that's yeah. not a. You watch it now, and you almost appreciate. it how hard that is that's almost christopher christopher reeve clark kent superman yeah before that before he did that right i mean like because we used to make a joke in the george reeve uh, superman show that there was zero distinction right like clark (laughs) might as well have been like all right i'm off to lunch guys and just fly out of the office with a suit on i mean why not (laughs) but uh, you know as goofy as as it was to not realize that I don't, you know, that Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson were back in that show. Yeah. It, it, you watch it now and it's almost more believable as an adult. And in 2023, it's incredible because they were all just amazing. And Cesar Romero, his Joker was incredible. Julie Newmar was amazing. Fred Gorshin, Frank, Frank Gorshin was amazing. All amazing. 
What because a, what they all owned it. They, they owned, owned it. the silliness of it and the satire of it. They, they were, weren't always apologizing for what they were doing on television. And and you've got really serious seasoned actors in many cases who uh, maybe didn't necessarily have to do Batman and, and be on that show. But then they were anyway, and they knocked it out of the park. You absolutely, not for one second, do you believe that they're just hamming it up because they get a paycheck you know they're they were uh, to be in it yeah. they're unapologetically those characters yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so that's a great way to put it um okay so as we're talking and i will be honest i have a heath ledger scene just kind of pulled up we wanted to share it and play it because i do think it's the definitive joker scene in cinema and freak you actually mentioned it i actually have that hostage scene queued up because i think the i mean his demonic to silly to threatening to back to silly is like it's a, it's a wild ride but I was having a really hard time between Jack Nicholson and, and Heath Ledger. And, and and both of you guys hit all the reasons why they're my top two favorites. But I'll say this for purposes of this, this podcast. And we do this again in six months and this may change. I'm going to go with Heath Ledger because Jack, Jack Nicholson's Joker is amazing Jack Nicholson being the Joker. Heath Ledger is Heath Ledger becoming the Joker. Mm, good point. Yeah. You, you yeah. don't. Yeah. You do not see Heath Ledger. Jack Nicholson's Joker is Jack, and I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad it is. I'm glad it exists, and it's. I. I think it's bloody brilliant, and I still love it. But I think I'm going to go with Heath for the purposes of this. I think I kind of knew. I had the scene queued up, but still. Um, and you know, I think some of the stuff that that Nolan did that made him so ambiguous he had no origin story whatsoever and we didn't want one or need one remember when gordon is talking to the officers at the jail or somebody's maybe talking to him i can't remember now exactly and they're like you know he has no no id no fingerprints we don't know where this guy's from no nothing nothing in his pockets but a pocket knife we can't you know and i thought mm-hmm. to myself man that's creepy these these guys can't even find who this guy is does this guy even know who he is? Yeah. Are those stories that he's telling about his scars? Are they, is he really just making that bullshit up on the fly? Or are these fantasies in his head that happened because it was so traumatic that I, I don't know. There was about to be a third story potentially at the end. Remember he looks at Batman and says, you know how I got these scars and he, he gets interrupted. He goes, you mean these or whatever? And he shoots. Oh, them. Right, oh yeah. right. Yeah. Right. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. What's that third one? If I could, yeah. if I could meet Chris Nolan tomorrow, I would say, did you have that written? What was the third version? Of that? Right. Right. Because it's there, you know, and I, I guarantee you, Heath as an actor had it written. If it wasn't actually on paper because he immersed himself in the role and to, and such, you know, I, such a, such a shame. We, you know, I'm sure you guys have all read that, you know, he was, Heath was going to be in three, two as well. Maybe not as the as the main character, but he was going to be in three. Nolan's, I think, I'm pretty sure Nolan's come out and said that that was the plan, you know. And it's, you know, who knows what could have been, you know. Yeah. I, I wonder if and if that, I, you know, if I would I would be curious to see if if, if Nolan has really 100 percent confirmed that, because like uh, you know at my uh, old outlet over at BOF, I I know that that Bill was real involved in, in those to give him a lot of credit for those, those, that era for Batman on film and and the Nolan trilogy. And I know that he talked to him and he'll say, and I I hate to speak for for him, but I'm saying that that wasn't the case. And and it doesn't mean that, that he, that the the information he has is hundred percent accurate. I don't, I don't know, but I, I will say I would, I can't imagine in my mind if he didn't pass away, for him not to be in there somewhere again, e- even if it was a scene like we got in the Batman where it's sort of this, he goes to see him in Arkham and there's a right, right. You know, you know, cause I, cause I, I love when he says to Batman at the end of uh, when he's hanging upside down, he's like, you know, you and I are destined to do this forever. Yeah. And so, you know, that this is not going anywhere. <laughs> this is this demented yeah. relationship is going to continue. So I, you know, that'd be something to, man, again, I'd love to talk to Chris Nolan about that. So I don't, I just, but at the same time, you, Creek, I don't see how you could not have yeah. done it. I mean, yeah. really, at the end of the day, how could you have not? And I love The Dark Knight Rises, but uh, I think about that film and if there would have been some Joker in there somewhere, somehow, certainly wouldn't have heard it. Yeah. Anyway, um, well, what a conversation. Not a bad Joker live action to date. 
Yeah, and you know what? I wanted to add that uh, I really debated between Joaquin Phoenix and Jack Nicholson. Oh, interesting. Um, yeah, and, I, know, I didn't know, Bob. I didn't know like what your opinion was on Joker oh, the movie. I, I've I never, love that I've never. Movie. Okay, I wasn't yeah, sure. I, I, okay. I, just, I absolutely love it. And and here's one of the reasons why I knew that I loved it when I saw it. I've seen it a few times. Yeah. But when I saw it the first time, I went in with kind of ambivalent expectations, because one of my biases is. I don't really like Batman stories that don't involve Batman. Sure. It's one of the reasons why I couldn't get into the Gotham TV series. No Batman. Mm -hmm. And yeah. and so I that I think that universe, the universe of Gotham City needs Batman as the anchor, as the center point because Batman sets the tone for everyone else because all these other characters are designed to reflect some aspect of Batman or to be a contrast to Batman. So it's like you take that element out of the story and then suddenly, for me at least, it's lacking. And that's just a personal bias. I'm not saying that Gotham sucked or any Batman universe story that doesn't involve Batman sucks. I'm just saying for my personal preferences. And so when I knew that uh, the Joker didn't feature Batman, it took place when Bruce Wayne's just a young boy, uh, I was skeptical, and then when I saw it, I was like, oh my God, it doesn't even matter that Batman's not in this. This is a wonderful portrayal of Joker, and it, Joaquin Phoenix does such a, an amazing job carrying that movie that you, I, I didn't even realize, oh, well, there's no Batman in this story, but I could absolutely imagine where Batman could enter into this universe. And I hope we get some glimpse of Batman in the second movie which is apparently going to be a musical. This is going to be, it's going to be so, so out there and crazy, oh and I think yeah. it's going to blow people away. I, yeah. honest it, to God, think that this is going to be something else. I think it's going to uh, do quite well. Yeah. If I may. Yeah. If I may, because <laughs> just, that movie is a mixed bag for me, and yeah. I understand why you guys love it. I don't hate it. I, it's like one of those things I watched it. I've seen it twice, and after the second time, I'm like, there's some brilliant stuff in this. I don't know if I ever want to see it again. And I don't, I don't personally care that Batman's not in it because I look at this as a offshoot universe where it's Gotham, it's Joker. But even though the Waynes are in it and Bruce Wayne, that Bruce Wayne may not necessarily become Batman. It's not what this is supposed to be about. And but that didn't bother me. In fact, that was something I liked about it. Um, and I, I, I want to revisit it. In fact, I'm going to before the, the sequel comes out. But I just sort of let it go. And I thought, you know what? I respect the fact that it did a billion and 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 people loved it, and that's great. Didn't quite work for me, but. There's no doubt that it was um, a, a fantastic work of art and, and, and talent. But for some reason, I can't even describe it. I am more excited for the sequel than I am for most sequels of movies that I loved. And I can't explain that. Hmm. I, I don't. I think it's because I thought, leave it alone. Let it be in a vacuum. Don't fuck it up. Don't do that. And then you see Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn and you see the. You, you said it's a musical and you see the, I, I just, it's so stylized and interesting. And I'm going, I've got to see where they go with this. And she's a phenomenal talent and oh, she can, yeah. and she's a fantastic actress. I, I, she, I was sold on uh, oh, the movie where she's married. Uh, she's in love with uh, the musician and he's oh, uh, uh, stars uh, born uh, stars yeah. born uh, with Bradley Cooper. And, uh, well, and did you, did you see the, the and, one about and, and the fashion move, you know, the one she's the, uh, you know, the fashion family. One of my, uh, you know, the one it's Jared, Jared, Jared's in that too, as well. I didn't, I didn't yeah, see but, that. Yeah. But she's um, the, 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 movie, the movies, you know, eh, it's got yeah. strong and weak points, but her every scene, she just soaks up the, I mean, she just dominates that, that, that screen. She's so good. Yeah. I can't wait for the sequel. I just can't wait. I well, think the fact that Joaquin's, mind. The fact that Joaquin's doing it, that's what blows mm -hmm. me away, because yeah. I'm sure you guys all know about the Doctor Strange thing. And he's like, you know, got offered this massive amounts of money to do Doctor Strange. And he's like, I'm not doing I don't do sequels. You know, I mean, the fact that he was be able to be convinced to do a sequel just because of his, you know, his, you know, call it branding, call it his his outlook, whatever it is. But that the Joaquin branding is not a sequel guy, you know, mm. and uh the fact that he they convinced him to do this sequel, you know, the script had to just freaking knock him out, you know? Yeah. And I, and I think that's all the more reason to, to believe that maybe Batman's not in it. And I'm crawling inside his head way too much for a person. I don't know. But I'm just speculating that, that. 
here's something weird I do whenever I see the Joker. Whenever he first appears on screen, whenever Joaquin first appears on screen, I do my Diane, Diane Weist impression where I go, Hi, Gary. <laughs> Parenthood. I can't, I can't help but to do that line from Parenthood. Uh, that's that guy such a great a, film. <laughs> he's had a hell of a career. And he was really, really good in Parenthood, just as that little kid yeah. who's jerking it all the time. Yeah, because that—that's his mom, right? And she has no yeah, connection. Yeah, plays his mom, and he's he, like he goes, skulking in and out of the house. Hi, Gary. Hi, Hi Gary. He goes off to his room. Yeah, yeah he goes, then he goes and busts up his dad's dentist office. <laughs> yeah, right. And, and then uh, Ted, Ted Theodore Logan, same character in that. Oh movie. yeah, Everybody. yeah. <laughs> That what is like, one messed up little dude. I think that dude's going for a world record. Chris <laughs> <laughs> <Christmas, baby. laughs> uh, quick, quick, Quickly on the transition scene, you know, we, you guys have mentioned about Nicholson and the transition scene in Batman 89. I, I would also say there's, I love the, and I call it a transition scene in Joaquin Phoenix's mm. uh, Joker, the bathroom scene after he kills mm. the guys on the subway with the oh, cello. Yeah. And that's to me, that's where he becomes, that's where everything snaps and he becomes yeah. Joker. Right. It's a great there. scene. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, so I'm, I'm going yeah. to revisit that soon. Uh, Jen mm. has never seen it. And that's something for, uh, I, yeah. And I think that's right up her alley. She likes horror films too. That's, it's gruesome. Yeah. Okay. Cool deal. Well, listen guys, this was a great conversation. It was a hard one. What a thank you freak base for the, uh, the topic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Great I'll talk, always talk Joker. Yeah, can't wait for me to be able to afford a real producer for the show where we have people clapping and things going on. But anyway, we'll get wait, there. Wait, before we yeah. do, do we mention Mark Hamill? I, I think I've got to. I got to say something good about Mark Hamill and his portrayal as the animated. And it's his birthday Joker. today too, right? Is it? Is I'm it? Pretty sure I saw that on the uh, that little platform we sometimes hang yeah. out on yeah. yeah well props to yeah. mark hamill because yeah. once again another uh, another joker actor bringing his own flavor and uh, angle on the character that was uh, i mean that's one of the great things about the joker character is i don't think any one joker portrayal has knocked off a previous portrayal oh uh, let's just do what heath ledger did or let's just do what jack nicholson did you don't really see that and certainly mark hamill could have come in on the success of Batman 89 and done sort of a Jack Nicholson impression as that character. And obviously you have to give some credit too to Bruce Tim for developing it, but um, it was a wonderful and purely psychotic portrayal of, uh, of the Joker. And I thought he did have that depth to it where the, the, the Joker in the animated series and Mask of the Phantasm was uh was both silly and psychotic in equal parts i think that was uh another angle to uh, mark hamill's joker that was really uh, entertaining i Thank love uh, go ahead, go ahead. No, I, was, I was gonna say real quick i love watching him record joker yes. in the studio because <laughs> right. you get you can see him in live action mm -hmm. doing it quite frankly yeah. Yeah. can i ask you guys one final question uh thinking of the current landscape any actor any age any era whether it be like, I wish this person at this time would have, or this person, this current actor would do it. Uh, who would you like to see play the Joker that hasn't played the Joker yet? Who do you think Ooh, would it? I mean, obviously the William, question. the William Defoe one's the one that everybody always, you know, you've seen so many different that won't fan, be mine. fan, fan <laughs> yeah. casting. Mine either, but I'm saying you see that, but that idea, like if there was, you know, any era, like we can even. Dead, 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 dead or living? Yeah, sure. Why not? How about a Lawrence yeah. Olivier Joker? <laughs> oh. <laughs> you know uh joker that's living or dead De oh dennis hopper oh wow i could see that how about dennis hopper as joker that would have been great like uh 70s like apocalypse now era dennis hopper what, what i would love is to take some random terrible actor like chuck norris and like it works brilliantly or something that's right. where my mind's going like you know, the casting of John Travolta in Pulp Fiction. Who would have thought that would have worked at that time? He's revered now, but at that time, it's like, what? The look who's talking guy? That ship sailed years ago. And of course, he was brilliant. And then he had this beautiful career after that. So I'm trying to also like crawl inside that mentality, right? And that's why I don't like Chuck you know Norris. Who else? Now that the flood banks are opening here, but uh, the floodgates, uh, uh, Malcolm McDowell be another oh wow I, I mean he's pretty much is the joker in clockwork orange you know I, true yeah 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 I, I, i've got one and it's going to throw everything for a loop okay. river phoenix oh oh yeah wow yeah, yeah. 
That'll open up a can of worms, right? Interesting. Yeah. All right. Cool deal. Well, okay. Let's do some plugs and get out of here. Freak, where can we find you? Uh, TikTok, obviously. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just, yeah. I'm at TikTok all the time. Obviously, all the other socials like everybody else. It's all under, doesn't matter, Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever you call it nowadays, threads, all that stuff. Um, just at F-R-E-E-K-B-A-S-S. Just look me up there and it'll pop up somewhere, I'm sure. Awesome. Thanks a lot, buddy. Mr. Thank Bob you. Seska. Uh, you know what? It just occurred to me. Freak base as Joker. <laughs> that is this all this music uh, thing is i'm telling you it's just a front this is yeah, all a front uh, this is, yeah you could write your own score your your own score too. Oh, there you go now your i kind of want to see theme. that you got to do a uh live stream and full joker makeup freak yeah. well he does some live streams can, in a mask can, yes yeah, i do that's true yeah. yes cons consider it done consider it done <laughs> yes. uh you can find my podcast uh on my patreon page actually that's bob show.com it's right here on the screen right there yeah. uh and also uh, everywhere you get your podcasts and so, bob yeah. quickly you're you're probably getting close i mean because of what's going on in the news right now you, <clears> the the star trek one sh like theoretically might be up again sometime soon is that true uh, or is that yeah i hope so yeah i right. gotta talk to mary when we're gonna restart that if the uh, right. actors can come to some sort of agreement and and uh, settle all of that i think we'll be ready to dive back in yeah well, let's hope for that across lots the to board. talk about for sure yeah. yeah yes and you know we'll do a whole show of courtney brennan and i on just the strike and everything once this is back up and running anyway so on behalf of the three of us let me just say this real fast my personal facebook page was hacked by a phishing scam uh. we, lo we lost our friends from work facebook page i'm gonna have to recreate that but follow us on twitter i'm still calling it twitter youtube Friends from work pod. Find us all over the internet. I'm at Dick Shoes on Twitter. Thanks for watching. Friends from work. Catch you next time. I don't see you, Daddy.